Yes, welcome back to WCS Austin here as we have concluded our first series for the mainstream. As we know, we'll get into some in just a few moments' time. But x in there coming out, really showing some extremely strong play in those last two games, realizing, and even saying in the interview, that he felt that Noni was the stronger player at the beginning of that series. Was it strong play, Galeris? I mean, he did win Not the series. Good. He did win the series, you're right. And that's actually what I'd like to highlight, which is in these short-form tournament uh, formats with best of three, doesn't always have to be the best player that advances. The guy that sometimes picks the better strategy. And in this case, he saw weakness in game two, which I liked. Uh, I did think, and I, I think we kind of all sensed that blood in the water. Unfortunately, so did Noni, where he was like, uh-oh, I'm not reacting very well to this at all. So going back to the exact same, ex the same build, uh, minus dropping the Widow Mine, just like literally rallying two right in the front and then pushing off of that. Uh, Noni even adjusted his build to try and handle it better, but I have to agree with our fantastic commentator, Rotterdam who was talking a lot about how this was a very defensible situation that went awry. It just did not go the way he wanted to, and and that means Kawhi advances. Well, not advances, but wins, and is in good position. He advances to the winner's match, yeah. doesn't he? Oh, we're not doing that. I'm killing that. <laughs> that we, we used to say that. I blame Apollo, and that's why. <laughs> you blame for everything. We sent him to Australia now, so he's in uh, the, the penal colony. The StarCraft community blames Apollo for a lot of things, but yeah, you that, have to. That could be one as well. To. There has to be one. <laughs> <laughs> he is our sin eater. He's the StarCraft 2 sin eater. Yeah, he you know? really is. So, Todd, um, obviously there was Massive vs. Vibe going on. Did that conclude? Uh, yeah, uh, it was kind of the same scenario, except he didn't go Vibe's way. Like, I think he yeah. realized that Maza was just better, so he tried to play a little bit more unconventional in Game 1 with an all-in. Uh, game 2, completely the opposite, very macro-orientated, three bases, gasless, into a lot of roaches, infestors, and Maza just powered through. And Maza looked really good, actually, yeah. in, a, in a group that's very tough. So I'm very excited uh, for his upcoming games to see if he can do as well. Uh, I think he will play Uthomal in the winner's match. Todd, out of 101%, what percentage do you give Massa to advance from that group? Uh, 71. Okay. All right, then. 71, that's high. I like that's it. High. It's good. He's, yeah. he's, he was known as a TVT killer, mm. uh, and Uthermal would, I think, be otherwise the favorite for that group. Mana is sometimes hit or miss in terms of what form he's in. Yeah. You know why? Because Mana keeps talking about, or at least at Nation Wars, he kept talking about how he versus Terran, it's, it's tough. <laughs> Mana complaining? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I see him playing what Heroes of the Storm as well, there you go. Uh, oh. But obviously, uh, there is Euthermal with that one up against Mana at the moment, so good start from him. There's always a Team Liquid uh, attack going on there. I think he might have won already, but I could be it's wrong. It's contractual that they have to be, yeah. they have to go head to head at least a, a few times. They definitely do. Well, whilst that was going on, of course, we had a lot of other games going on here at WCS Austin. Uh, we have, of course, with the 80 players being here, a lot was going on in the tournament area down towards the back. So overall, what we've seen while all of that was going on, Kelazor actually 2-0 uh, in Group A, so he's got off to a very good start. We had Namsha also 2-0ing. And how do you think about this Swedish contingent that's actually here? You've got people like Namsha, you've got people like Sortov, who always kind of like are able to throw those stones in the water and cause some ripples, but not gain those exact heights that they really want to. What do you think about the Swedish guys? Yeah, it used to be about uh, 91 Sasse, and nowadays the Zergs, uh, they've, they're kind of the new generation of Swedish players that are doing really well. and. These guys, honestly, like I feel like we almost say it every tournament, but you shouldn't sleep on them. If they made top eight, top four in this tournament, yeah. either sort of on Namsha, I don't think too many people should be surprised because they're actually insanely good and uh, mm -hmm. they train a, a whole lot. Actually, there is a whole group of people here at this tournament that has yeah. been practicing in Korea very recently quite a bit. Sort of is one of them, T Drogo as well, who's been streaming top 30 Grandmaster. So these guys, looking forward to their games a lot. And uh, even the group that we got coming up there is a little bit of Europe versus uh, versus America, where you got Lambo, Bly, Bells, and Poke Bunny, which I'm sure uh, so we, we're going to banter around, Jeff, aren't we? And it's a shame they all have to <laughs> lose to Neeb in the end as well. <laughs> for all that work. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's pretty good, not going to lie. Representing America very well. Of course, there were tons of other games going on in the back in the tournament area, uh, as we did have Lambo and Bly are going to be the next match coming up. But we had, you know, Bales actually falling to Lambo that 2 0, as you mentioned, and we had Pope Bunny falling 2 0 to Bly as well. Um, so that was going to be our next match coming up. What do you think about Bly going up against Lambo? They're similar guys, right? They made it all the way from Europe, and they are not the guys that are known to make it to the last, the absolute last few steps in those kind of tournaments. Yeah. Maybe Bly did once at DreamHack Leipzig, but other than that, not really. So that makes it for a, for a matchup where it's two guys that are trying to finally pose that big result. Now they go up to one another. Whoever wins that match will advance on through to the next round. Yeah. So a pretty important one. I, I would say overall they still pretty, have a pretty good chances of both making it out of the group, but I think making it out in first place is going to be very important because next groups super stacked oh yeah 
By the way, the reason that uh, we have a group with Massa, Uthermal, and Mana all together is because Uthermal took second in this group after game time, if you think about it. So True. Using that as an example, very important to make it in first place if you're the favorite. Good point. I mean, I'm, the CVZ is interesting. I think Bly has been always one of the, like, hounds of the European scene in terms of CVZ. He's just uh, been hound. very, very scared. Well, yeah, like a, a war leader. He's a warrior over there in that matchup. Uh, Lambo, of course, is uh, an ECS. Is it ECS or EPL? Which is he a champion of? Meister Shaft. Meister Shaft. Did you need me to say this? <laughs> he is a one or two time Master Shaft, Meister Shaft champion. Yeah, good. Uh, he's been sliding up and down over there and just, he, he was able to take a big win there and that's a huge deal. Uh, so, but with, <laughs> I can't you're, believe. You're breaking me up, man. You gotta, you gotta, <laughs> come on. What would apology? You gotta ask yourself, all right? You gotta ask it. Impressive, impressive. <laughs> All right, well, uh, it does seem like we just have a few uh, moments here before we actually do get into uh, our Bly going up against Lambo. Bly, no kind of stranger to some of more uh, the aggressive styles. He always seems to kind of thrive at the beginning of uh, expansions. and then Cheesy, you can say it. He's very cheesy. That's one way to look at it. He plays very aggressive, all right? That's, like, one, that's that the way. The commentator language again? No, we're going to get some cheese. and that's. But to be fair, and it, like, there's this weird sentiment that that's a bad thing it's not it's it's, yeah. it's a successful style the guy's done very well for himself but he is cheesy He's a well cruiser. when they do it against us it's a bad thing right you're right uh Lambo's doing pretty well on ladder by the way mm. rank 14 i believe on the european uh, grandmaster ladder 6700 he's, he's closing in on the 7k club not quite just yet maybe he'll get there but uh he's doing pretty decent for himself do you recall how Lambo did in challenger or he, he was very close i think to qualifying mm. I didn't like, get to see too much of the European one, unfortunately, because as much as I was watching some of it towards the end, I was a little... Roddy will, uh, Roddy's so a little an encyclopedia of StarCraft, all right? Like, yeah. Roddy doesn't even True. ever check any website. He knows everything. He remembers every game to the details. So since he's casting this, I'm sure he will enlighten us more, and he will remember every one of those games in details. I really appreciate that of him and for filling in for me, because I was gone. That was nice as well. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Uh, so I believe that we are just still waiting to be informed <laughs> as to whether or not this uh, game is about to begin. Uh, as obviously Bly and Lambo going up against one another, Zerg versus Zerg, very much so volatile, or do you think that it's kind of got past that point? I, I remember talking to Nurture quite a bit about him saying that it's a lot more figured out towards, the, especially towards the mid stages. What do you think? And then he lost the next five DVDs. The matchups. He did lose some. <laughs> Just like Legacy of the Void right now is really solid. There's not really a whole lot of bad matchups for us as spectators. I like a lot yep. of them. ZVZ being one of them. It's certainly like a mid hots had kind of a bad streak where it was just wow. coaches colliding into each other forever. I so. didn't know that, but Bly has actually a huge winning record uh, up against Lambo. Is in that series, not maps, 16 and 2. Yeah. How oh, is that even? What? He must be like Lambo's nemesis. Check, for sure. check Bly's overall ZVZ stats. He's got like a. 89 out of 200 percent, 204 percent actually. So it's like, <laughs> all right, boys, it's over. <laughs> You're done. You're done. All right. Well, thank you very much, gents. We'll be checking in with you for j in just a little bit. For now, though, we're going to head over to Smix, who's at the stage. We had our first match earlier on today, and now it is time for the second. It'll be a Zerg versus Zerg, where we have a one-time German EPS champion going up against a two-time DreamHack runner-up. Guys, give it up. It is Lambo and Bly! Okay, it's time for our next match of the tournament here on the main stage as Bly is going to go up against Lambo. We are joined by the ever so dashing Nathanius here on the desk. You've been enjoying so far? Yeah, it's been great. Yep. You know, I'm glad to be here as the residential Zerg versus Zerg expert. Yeah, since precisely. We, since we couldn't have Pig, I am ready to take on that role. Him well, shaving his head was a bit too much to bring him across, apparently. Just before Todd left, he dropped a huge information bomb on us. Checking mm -hmm. out that illegal act stats. 16 and two in series favored towards this Ukrainian player right here, Mr. Bly himself. Now I crunched the math. 16 and two is a huge favor in favor of the guy that is 16 wins over two losses. 16 is a much larger number than two. I've turned out. I, I don't typically like to do math on stream, but on this one, I feel confident. I did it. Yeah. 
I can't believe. But yeah, that's impressive. That is impressive stuff. So overall, looking at Lambo as well, he's kind of been a guy that has grown in the German scene and say so been able to do very well in Meisterschaft. In terms of the international stage, though, what really have we been able to see from Lambo? I think Lambo is more coming into his own. We've seen him at Home Story Cup. Yep. We did see him in the WCS system last year where I feel like the rhetoric of this guy has something to prove can start to kind of go away. He's consistently been one of those names that is still performing, is still doing well. Uh, that being said, though, this is just group stage two, so he's not, you know, he didn't absolutely blow people away in that challenger system. Still has to win here, but I, I, I like this matchup as a classic. Bly, again, a long-standing, very good European Zerg going against Lambo, who's like the, the new age, but it's coming to that point in time where it's like, you're no longer new age, you got to start getting some results now. Yeah, Lambo's looking to be part, I, I like that, I would have said, like the new crew of Zerg players, yeah. especially that kind of popped up when we talked about the rise of players like Serral over the last year, who definitely have, you know, really solidified themselves as being, you know, among the best of the best of their country. But as good as that, as good as we know Lambo is, he, he participates in a lot of the online tournaments. He's a name that comes up a lot. Mm. He is very good. He has not cemented himself as that European Titan. And you can see that when you look at their stats versus yep. guys like Bly. Uh, I do like that, our little cheese warning graphic here. <laughs> Bly, it should, it should have just been at 100%, honestly. 89. I like <laughs> it. I love it. Very, very high. But, you know, that's what we expect from someone like Bly, who is willing to take risks at almost every single stage of the game, especially in the early game, I would say. Well, it's interesting, yeah. too. I mean, look at that uh, win percentage in the matchup. Bly, I actually expected that to be way higher. His ZVT mm. and ZVP have at times been, in my opinion, especially for how the level he typically competes at, very weak. Right. But his ZVZ has always been a constant big performer, but uh, apparently I'm misinformed or... I don't know where that's yeah, my, from. That, that brings my rare. attention straight back to when he had a couple of really great ZVZs in like Leipzig and whatnot not mm. too far ago. But okay. I think a lot of that comes down to the fact as well that he's constantly playing in the European region where the European region has just a very wealth good. of very strong Zergs, sure. right? Yeah. Someone like Serral, for example, is dominating the Zergs in that region. And Lambo, you know, is no stranger to that. There was a lot of pretty good Zergs in the German scene oh, to yeah. then propel him forwards into those online cups where he was beating a lot of those Zergs. Well, they got Snoot over there. They got TLO, yep. the most creative player in the history of the game. True. Well, a lot of good Zergs, so you're very well. Yeah, I, I actually like that you brought up the fact that Europe is just full of ridiculously good Zergs, because I was also going to say, like, he's not a 53% CVZ <laughs> no. even rate player. Uh, having guys like Snoot in a laser in Nurchio to compete yeah. against will definitely knock you down a couple of pegs. So I, I still would expect, despite the graphic that we just saw, to him to have a very strong position in his EVZ like this against Lambo. Yeah, so I think um, we are almost ready to get into this series between these two. And saw the bands and picks there for the maps to come along. Guys, do you have, have any final thoughts as to whether which way this is going to go between Bly and Lambo? I mean, you got to favor Bly. That's a pretty damning stat. 16 2 in series. At that point in time, mm -hmm. Uh, as a former player that had a lot of people that beat me that hard, uh, I would tell you that it gets in your head. You start to be like, well, you, you like start second guessing every choice you make. You're like, I know he's yeah. gonna cheese, but is it this one? This is the one I faced on the ladder, but then you're second guessing that because you've lost so much. So this is gonna be a really cool mind game to see how Lambo overcomes that because he knows he's as good or better than Bly, but record wise, he just is not getting those wins and it's gonna be a tough battle for him. Nice. I find it hard to favor anybody with Bly in a series like this. He's just, you know, we're, we're on a stage as well. Like, he has to play in front of an audience. Yeah. Bly is very comfortable with that. He's done it a ton of times, and he will certainly abuse that with that very high cheeseometer, whatever it is <laughs> oh, that wow. we're going to call yeah. it. It's good. Uh, so I, I expect to see him take some very aggressive wins this series. All right, well, thank you very much. We can head over to our commentary team. Make sure to vote in the Twitch chat as well as to who you think is going to win. For now, I'm sending you over to Maynard and Rotterdam. All right, guys, it is ZVZ time. Maynard and Rotterdam to show you a very cheeky opening here as we introduce this player in the bottom left from the Ukraine. This is Bly. I'm happy we jumped into the game so quick, Maynard, because the 89% cheese warning, it was <laughs> spot on. Absolutely. And in the top right from Germany, this is Lambo. <laughs> No, may not. I always love to disagree with people, especially with Todd. There is something about this yeah. meeting with Todd that makes me very happy. There is something very special about it. Yeah, it's just satisfying, right? But I actually disagree a little bit with the gentleman on the desk. I feel that Lambo is the favorite going into this series. Even though statistically, Bly has done well in the past, I feel that Lambo has really been improving a lot as a player over the last six to nine months. I think from time to time, he struggles a little bit. 
truly showing his skill on the big stage where maybe he gets a little nervous and he's one of those it's kind of a cliche right but he's better in practice than he is in the tournament but i really feel that he's about to step over that i kind of favor lambo here and i'm curious to see how this plays out especially with bly so far just playing straight into his image where it's like okay we kind of expect bly to be aggressive well game number one here on proxima he is very aggressive that's right a start thing starting off here with a gas pull speedling opening lambo of course not getting any information here, he didn't drone scout or anything, so he's just relying on his overlords for vision here. And uh, I kind of agree with you, Roddy. I mean, we, I've been hearing a murmurings from my uh, European friends in the pro scene that there is a lot of hype around Lambo Man now. I mean, his MMR was brought up by Todd, uh, but the real stat is that he's just been doing great against incredible Zergs on the ladder, as has Bly. Uh, from what we told, but this Overlord still hasn't seen that cluster of lings just yet. Yeah, the Bly is actually playing uh, truly to his image here. He saved off so many oh, nice. lings. The Overlord almost missed it, but in the end, he did get a glimpse of it. If not, the second Overlord was going to identify or confirm that there is indeed a whole bunch of speed lings running across the map. So it will all come down to the defense of our German Zerg. How solid will it be for Lambo? Well, he reacted as fast as he possibly could, evacuating the natural, getting both queens up into the main, dropped that bailing nest as soon as he saw that cluster of lings, trying to get a spine crawl in the, in the main mineral line as well, but the natural looks like he's going to forfeit it for now, as he knows if he can keep the main alive, he can recover. Yep, especially because he's up by seven workers now. A couple of links do get intercepted. Did he just cancel the spine there in the end? Does he feel like I... he didn't need it? Wow, he yeah, canceled he the spine. Okay. So Lambo's going to try to keep the hatch alive. If he does succeed in doing so, he puts himself in a phenomenal position. But that's a rough fight for those drones, Maynard. Yeah, that is so many links here, Rotterdam. The Bane links now coming down to help the German Zerg. Oh, nearly getting those connections, but the links, the link micro here for Bly, good enough to keep them alive for now. They're looking for these drone wow. lines. A big connection there, and the, and the Zerglings do go down. Only three drones going down, and the hatchery's going to live as well. And that queen stays alive to a phenomenal hold so far for Lambo. That must be nice for a German Zerg to just start off like this, where indeed sometimes he struggles in these bigger games, games that he would win online. He doesn't win them offline. Well, this really couldn't have gone any better for himself. He made a very... I would say ballsy call almost to cancel that spine and be like, no, he's not going from a mineral line. I don't even need this spine. All I need to do is keep that hatchery alive. And he did it. And I would almost say he passed the test in flying colors there. Yeah, really good call from Lambo showing his mastery in this matchup. He does have a very good win rate as we saw in that uh, opening scene there. But we do have a Ling advantage here for Lambo in the middle of the map and he has Baneling Tech, which is also a massive advantage. A big catch in the middle here, getting a lot of Bly's Lings as Lambo comes in, uh, Lambo comes in for the throat of Bly. So Bly put two queens, and that's actually uh, well done there, picking off one of these Banes there. Good job there by Bly. But these queens are a little bit exposed and there are no Banelings yet for Bly. So if these Lings can squeeze by, they can't yet, but how long can these queens oh. keep the door shut? A little bit of a miscontrol, or maybe a pick off there from Bly with those queens, but the queen is going to go down. Just one wow. more transfuse left. That one on the far right is just about to go down. Bly bringing up a third queen for the main. Bailey's coming up a little bit late to the party, though, and it looks like Bly may just have enough here. Yeah, in the end, he does get both queens, but that wasn't for a free. Lambo paid the price there with a lot of Zerglings and a couple of Banelings as well. Great job by Bly, because it felt like that could have been quite risky. If one of the queens would have been picked off immediately, then these links get to wrap around on the other one. And at a certain point, Bly is going to be forced to morph a lot of defensive Banes. Fortunately for him, that was never the case. Excellent hold. That's right, some drones from Black coming back. The third's being taken for both players. Lambo's a little bit further ahead, or a fair bit further ahead, as he's starting to go up into the next stage of tech. And that is going to be Roach Ravager here. As uh, both players are sort of posturing. No, neither player wants to overcommit at this point. It could spell doom. Of course, Spealing Tech and Bailing Tech out for both players. That can end the game very, very quickly, Roddy. But we do have an Evo Chamber coming in here. So Lambo, with that layer on the way, almost certainly going to just chill and uh, get that, uh, that Roach tech in full swing here. Is Bly still on Ling tech, still on Hatchery tech? Yeah, I think it's safe to say that the longer this game goes on, the better it is for Lambo. Uh, I think he feels very confident in the later stages of CVZ, but obviously surviving against Bly is not easy. And there's also Ooh. this danger, once you think the aggression is over, it often continues. But for now, a German Zerg is the one putting on the pressure, trading even amounts of bailings there. But he does have a few extra links, so maybe he can get some damage done. But I think in the end, Bly should be all right here. Uh, he looks like he's going to lose another queen, which stings for Bly. Transfuse going down on the link wow. before she went down. Might as well transfuse something. And Lambo has a bunch of speedlings in the main here for Bly. Uh, one, last, one last queen here at the main as Lair does get scouted. I mean, these, these links are going to get cleaned up. Nice connection there with that bailing run by from the Ukrainian Zerg. Damage happening on both sides of the map, but in the end, 
Lambo in a much better spot here. Yeah, I feel like Blaze has been losing a few too many queens by now. I was kind of surprised. I was like, this is really not supposed to be that hard for him because Lambo is not truly committing to this pressure, right? Like he's tacking up to Roaches. He's getting plus one. Roach Warren was finishing up. I was like, why is Blaze struggling so much? Well, apparently he was morphing Banes on the other side of the map. He did some damage, but he also took more damage at home because of that move. Mm -hmm. So I think it's safe to say that things are going well, pretty bad for Bly. Uh, obviously, he needed to do more with the very first aggression. After that, it felt like he slowly but steadily clung his way back into it. But now I feel that Lambos is pulling further and further ahead. Yeah, I mean, losing queens like that, like even just losing one hatchery worth of injects, those constant injects going away, for, taken away from you from ZBZ, is tough to come back from. You can't keep up your production without the love. And we have a spire transition here on the way for Bly. Yeah, I mean, that's obviously a great comeback way, but I can hide, I, I just don't see a world where Lambo is going to sit back forever and then suddenly be like, oh no, my opponent has Mudas. Well, he caught me by surprise. I'm kind of expecting Lambo to pretty much go for it. Uh, there's really no reason not to. He knows that he has way more on the ground and that even if Bly is able to get a couple of Mutalisk out, that could potentially clean this up. Mm. Obviously, Lambo just wants to take out 20, 30, 40 drones and maybe a hatchery, and then he's completely okay with having to deal with Mudas if he has a far superior economy. Because one spine is not going to be enough no. to keep all these roaches at bay. There's a huge army supply advantage here for Lambo as he comes in to the third base of Bly, and Bly's in trouble. He's trying to make Banelings. He's trying to make his own roaches, but they instantly get picked off as they hatch here <laughs> by the superior army of Lambo. And I don't even know if we'll see Mutas in this game, Roddy. It is going to be so tough for him here. Lambo's pre-splitting nicely on these roaches, and Bly already in so much trouble. I can hear thought from here. He's like, look at this Bly. It's 96 <laughs> against 33 Maynard. I mean, Mutas are not going to save the day. Bly's going to make a couple of roaches here in the end trying to stabilize, but I think it's safe to say that our German Zerk, Lambo, is going to pick up game number one here. GG. Well played by Lambo there. A real masterclass in ZVZ. Like, the perfect decision to cancel those spine crawlers, just get a little bit of extra efficiency in that economy, knowing when he's held and being as efficient as possible is a sign of a great player. And, of course, that game just exploded. Everything just went further and further in his, fa in his favor as the game went on. So we're just going to head over to the desk and see what the boys uh, have to say about this map and other games going on. Quick start there as uh, Bly, unfortunately, not able to get himself as much traction to start off. Very aggressive start for him, but really not paying off. Lambo just kind of sitting back and doing the good old European macro. Yeah, interesting. I mean, we all knew it was coming, and yeah. Lambo included, and Lambo was able to stay calm, cool, and collected and deflect it quite easily. And then in that final fight, he had a 40 or 50 supply mm -hmm. advantage. And ZVZ, I, I would be very, very surprised to ever hear if a battle ever goes the other way when, when a player yeah. has 60 supply advantage. In other matchups, it can happen, but in ZVZ, very rarely, if ever. Pretty clean cut. Yeah, uh, on the other side of things, pretty intense series going underway, still in game one between Kelizer and Sort of. Mm. It's it's right in the middle of the action. He's opened up with some Raven harass, a lot of Hellion pressure, and it's he's just splitting Marines versus Zerglings right now, just nonstop battling, scanning, fighting for the position here on Sort of's fourth base out in the middle. And it's been it's been intense. Really fun matchup though. Sort of is one of those uh, prominent European Zerg players, really asserting himself as one of the absolute best. Kalizer out of Brazil though has a bit of an interesting kind of training regime. He's been in Korea practicing, he's been on North America. Yeah. Uh, and he is one of the bigger names that Europeans do know of. But with that big push right there and a 30 supply advantage, yep. he's doing pretty well there, it looks like. Look at that. Pretty explosive game from those two. And oh, there you go. The game literally just ended. Kelizer just took the first one. Perfect. Time. Well done, boys. I'm well just done. that good. You, that, well, that was all down to you. I'm glad we have you back as well. Not only Jeff. It was on me. Mm. Oh, OK, it was Jeff, actually. I couldn't have done it without Jeff. Ah, perfect, perfect. Literally. Literally. All right, well, thank you very much, gents. As you can see, obviously, here at the moment, we are going to be getting into game number two between Bly and Lambo. And uh, do you expect it to kind of go down the same path? Do you expect Bly to just constantly be putting on the aggression once again? I mean, Lambo looked really good. It was a big question of, you know, can he handle the big stage? EPS, of yep. course, giving him the advantage of having played in front of live audience. You got to like Lambo. I'm going to go with Rotterdam's prediction of his, at least a 79 out of 106%. Bly will just cheese again. I'm just going to just throw that out there. No big deal. Fair play. Fair play. All right. Well, thank you very much, gents. We're going to head over to the commentary team once again for game number two between Bly and Lambo. G'day, all you StarCraft Passion Lords. Welcome back. It is, of course, game two between Bly and Lambo. A pretty pretty huge knife fight here between these two zergs in the top left here from the ukraine this is bly within the 
Oil and gas again, Ronnie. Surprise, surprise. Surprise. That's nobody, Maynard. That's <laughs> nobody. And in the bottom right, winning game one with a beautiful ZBZ. This is Lambo. Looked excellent there in game number one. And since the boys at the desk were talking about it a little bit before the series start, but they forgot. They were like, I wonder how Lambo didn't qualify. Well, you should ask Ruddy. Well, fortunately, Ruddy does remember, Maynard. I know you do. You've it's always... actually kind of funny because Lambo was probably the closest guy not to make it into challenger directly when it came to the ladder qualifier he was often rank 8 rank 9 rank 10 barely missed out very first qualifier he went to the final round lost in a really close series against the french brothers dns 2-1 in a game where he really should have won game three on neil kirk everybody that saw that game loved it then the second qualifier again he made it to the final round but then he lost against mana so basically there was nobody that should have been in challenger more that didn't make it other than Lambo. So it's safe to say that he should have been in it, just fell short over and over and over again. Well, fortunately for Lambo and Lambo fans back at home, he is here now and looking pretty strong in the series so far. A very safe opening here for Lambo as well. So uh, a slightly more econo economical opening. So, I mean, with, with Bly obviously getting the egg early pool and the earlier gas, means that Lambo is generally gonna have a economy lead. It is truly bizarre to me how Bly can be doing this for years straight. Everybody knows it, including Lambo, just like Jeff said. You know, we literally all knew that Bly was going to be aggressive. And Bly is still putting up really good results and performances. Even though he's down 0-1 in this series, I'm curious to see how it plays out in game number two. But it's just bizarre, right? Because we always talk about StarCraft being a game where it's nice to be unpredictable, where it's important to switch it up. Well. Apparently not for Bly. I mean, he is switching it up just in different ways of being aggressive. Yeah, he's being more aggressive. He's getting more <laughs> gas and he's getting a Baneling there. So this time it's not just going to be a huge flood of Speedlings. He's going to have that huge splash damage potential against the Zerg that is uh, just now getting speed and there's no Baneling Nest in sight here. Yeah, Lemba does find these Banes morphing. That's obviously nice, but it's a little bit too late to just jump on top of them. So he's going to have to just sort of out micro Bly here. That's too many links clumped up. He has to be very careful there. Yeah, and he has uh, in their slow links as well. So these Banelings looking for a juicy connection. Uh, don't really get a ton, but there's not many links left over for Lambo trying to get that last Baneling. Does get that last nibble. One goes down. Still one, still alive. And not enough queens for a ramp block, so uh, Black could flood up here. He's got a lot, a big reinforcement coming down the left side of the map. Yeah, he really needs those reinforcements though, because right now he doesn't have that much left. He can morph a few more of them into Banelings. As Lambo, I think so far the hold has been good. He has a spine crawler on top of the ramp as well, but he doesn't just want to hold. He want to be able to keep this history alive, just like he did in the previous game. But I think it's safe to say that that's going to be very hard against all these speed links and that one Bane there. Uh, target fire, that spine crawler does get the Baneling and Lambo now with his own own Baneling tech. Will they get up in time to save him? So it looks like the Lings of Bly are coming up in. One Baneling does get sniped down by that spine crawler. Two more being warped in the main here. Well, Lambo getting his own defensive Banes up. A really good micro there by Lambo, saving a couple of those very low HP Zerglings and morphing them into Banes. That spine crawler is pushing in a lot of war. I picked off a couple of additional links. And I actually think that this is very doable now for Lambo. I think Lambo might be able to keep this hatchery alive. And if he does keep it alive, it's safe to say that the German Zerg is looking fantastic here in game number two. Yeah, it's getting a little bit low here. Lambo needs to save it now. And he does come down with the rest of his links. Pushes Bly wow. out. And Lambo in a lovely spot here. Bly starting to morph some Bane links, but he can absolutely deal with this. Look at the unit's lost resource tab real quick. 32 against 32. It couldn't have been more even. But that's obviously good news for Lambo because Lambo is the player with the extra hatchery, the extra larva, and he had three, four more drones. So awesome job. Really couldn't have been done any better, I'd say. Ooh, that Baneling nearly getting a cluster of lings there, but save for Lambo. Does save most of them. Baneling's just morphing here for Bly, and I mean, Bly's on one base. He's all in. This needs to work for him, but it's getting harder and harder for him as Lambo secures this natural, gets more and more yeah. hunkered hunk down with two more queens on the way as well, Roddy. I just don't see him breaking this. I think Lambo just put up a clinic of how to deal with this kind of aggression early on. I feel like he almost made all the right calls, and of course, you want to be really technical. You could say, like, wow, he lost maybe one Zergling too many there against the Baneling. Maynard, I don't care. This was awesome by Lambo. It's not 100% over yet, but Look at the amount of bailings that Lambo has here. I think it's safe to say that Bly knows he's going to have to transition or he's going to have to go super all in. Yeah. Neither things that he truly wants to do. I don't know about that transition, Roddy. I mean, he is starting to bank a bit of minerals now back at home. He could try and get a hatchery maybe, but it's going to be tough for him to get that critical damage to get any kind of advantage in this game at this point. Yeah, he finally got the spine crawler, but what does it even matter at the point where Lambo's army is actually bigger than the army of Bly when there are still three, four, five defensive bailings 
Bly is going to be forced to expand. And those are words that he did not want to hear in this game. <laughs> Yeah, and that's, uh, this is obviously on match point as well in this best of three. Yeah. Lambo being better safe than sorry, getting a second spine crawler on the back of the natural there. Feeling like Bly is going to go super all in, so he just wants to hold a little bit more securely. Uh, of course, we know in our caster cams that he is expanding back at home. Uh, and then potential huge counterattack here for Lambo. The Overlord does spot it. And there's just so many defensive mains, and even the uh, one spine that he lost, he just rebuilt it, right? A couple of queens are going to move out, trying to get an early snipe. Uh, I like what Bly is doing. He was trying to pull uh, Lambo a little bit out of position, but Lambo is just on point with everything. Might end up losing... No, nope. nothing there, nope. Maynard. Wow. Wow. Very little damage at all being done by Bly here at this stage of the game. And uh, Lambo is just chilling on two bases. Got a much better economy. Six more workers in a mirror matchup. Not too bad. One more base in a mirror matchup. Not too bad. And uh, is droning back at home as he feels he's very, very, very content here with what he has. I think it's important to mention as well that this is the winner's match. So if Bly ends up losing here, he's not out of the tournament just yet. But he's going to have to go up against the winner of Bills or Poke Bunny. And those are pretty annoying players to play with tournament live on the line. I think Bills is a very solid protos that's not very well known outside of the American scene and he's not a full-time pro gamer, but Bills is very solid and we all know Poke Bunny is just a very aggressive player, so Poke Bunny against Fly would be kind of hilarious because both players will just attack each other and perhaps even cheese each other. So right. but Poke Bunny actually teammates with another aggressive Terran we saw for our first series of day one of WCS Austin as Kawaiian. Mm -hmm. And yeah, things are looking very rough here for Bly, and it seems like Lambo is going to be able to secure himself at least a thousand dollars by making it into the round of 32, which is obviously awesome. That's the beginning, yeah. but I think it's safe to say that a player like Lambo does not travel all the way from Germany to Austin for a round of 32 finish. Yeah. He wants to walk away at least with WCS points, which you need to make top 16 for. But I even think that Lambo's probably looking at a tournament like this and be like, I want to finish top eight because I know what I'm capable of. Yeah, he's he's not here for snakeskin boots, ribs, and uh, cowboy hat, Roddy. He is absolutely in Texas well, to win some money. Everybody's here for ribs, Maynard. Well, uh, I've already had some. I haven't actually. What? It's amazingly enough, haven't Shame had barbecue yet. Shame on you. I know. Do you I have know. tacos though? I have had tacos. Yeah. Solid. Mac and <laughs> cheese? Uh, no, not yet. But time, you know, it's my trip. It's only the start of my trip. Okay. The counterattack here from Lambo, looking into the, getting the natural here of Lai. Does get in. Does get some lings. Not critical damage though. Just gets a little bit of a look at the natural. Bainling's coming in here to get some drones. Pickoffs there by the Queens, though. I mean, during all of this, Bly is actually tacking up to a Spire, so it is important that Lambo picks up on this. Uh, he doesn't want to get too, be too cut off by this. I mean, uh, what we saw in the previous game was obviously awesome for Lambo, where he hit right before that Spire was done, so the Mulas were not out yet. First, Reuters are on the way. A couple of extra Overlords are being produced as well by a German Zerg, so it's safe to say that he's getting ready for a similar attack. I'm just a tiny bit worried it might hit a little later than it did on Proxima. And then maybe Bly can still turn this into a game, but I think even if the Mutas come out, Lambo could still make a couple of spores, get a couple of extra queens out, and just eventually tech up to whether it's Infestus or Hydras, whatever he wants to do. And Bly doesn't have a ton of gas bank to make many Mutas here when that Spire finishes. He is, uh, you know, trying to get Roaches and upgrades as well back at home, which is obviously, you know, several yeah. hundred more gas in uh, not Spire tech. So it won't be a critical amount of muters, but we'll see how many he gets. And yeah, you're absolutely right. Huge attack here on the way for Lambo. We plus one. Tons of Roach is going to hit with this timing. And uh, there will be mutalists this time, but how many? It's beautiful, though. I mean, the Spire finishes up right now, but that's still not going to be in time. And even if Bly decides to make a couple of mutas, what are three, four, or five mutalists going to yeah, do against much. nine, ten, eleven Roaches that also have plus one? I think oh, it's wow. safe to say that this could very well be the beginning of the end. And then this was an awesome series by Lambo. Yeah, we've seen what two Legacy of the Void units there as the Ravagers just die instantly to this huge Roach timing of Lambo. And Bly is in so much trouble. The Natural in shambles, the Roach Spit Acid tearing him apart. And he just doesn't have enough here to hold. He's tripling the supply, Maynard. Look at it. Look at it. <laughs> I look at the supply and it looks like Lambo is going to take out the Ukrainian Zerg. Bly with a 2-0 victory. Brilliant holds against his early aggression and great transitions into that mid game. I think it's safe to say that both games were decided there in the first four or five minutes. Obviously, the games went on. Uh, I thought the hold in the first game was excellent. The hold in the second game was even better. That was just awesome, Maynard. Uh, I really don't think that Lambo could have done a lot better than he actually did. The spine was on time, the Queen Micro was good, the focus fire on the bait. Yeah. I loved everything there. Lambo showing us how solid he is against early game Zerg aggression. 
Yeah, very, very solid series. A near flawless victory. And let's go to Smex on the stage for the interview with the winner. Thank you very much, Maynard. Lambo, congratulations. It was a clean 2-0 from you. But actually, when I was looking at your match history versus Bly, it's actually been heavily favored on his side. He's actually 16-2 against you. So how does it feel to finally get a win against someone who's been beating you so many times? Uh, it feels really good winning against Bly always. He's like my big nemesis. But uh, lately, it's it's gotten better already. Like those, most of the los those losses are from Haru the Swarm. So yeah. And how are you doing overall? Because whenever I talk to pro gamers about you, they always say that you're a very difficult opponent, that you're very good on ladder and in practice, but what do you think is holding you back from a top finish at one of these events? I don't know. Usually I get very nervous as, like, the further I get into the tournament, the more nervous I get. But, like, this game I didn't get nervous at all because uh, I needed to beat Bly or, like, one of the other two to at least get into the money, and that's the most important part for me since I don't have a team, so all I want is to make the money back that I invest into getting here, basically. Now, I know that you just said that nerves is primarily the thing that you feel like is holding you back. Is that something you've uh, specifically worked on at all? Uh, not really. I just try to calm myself down, like taking uh, deep breaths and just telling myself I just want to play as good as possible. And then, like, it's gotten better already, honestly. So, yeah. Sounds good. Well, congratulations again. Best of luck, and we'll see you again on the main stage perhaps later on at this tournament. But of course, guys, we are headed to, headed to a very short commercial break. But when we come back, we'll have one more match from Group Stage 2.